While you're working, I have a question for all of you. Even as you're drawing it, you can see that these graphs, all of them, consist of two things. Every single one has the same two things on it. You've got these red dots. What do these red dots represent? The data. These are the data. Each point represents one piece of data, which is why they're often called data points. Original, I know. Uh, there are two axes. What are they about? So I, I heard firstly, I heard firstly X and Y, that's how they're labeled. But what might X and Y be? What could they actually represent? Any suggestions? Yeah, okay. So numbers, but specifically, numbers that you're maybe measuring or recording about someone, there's two of them, two variables. So that's why we call this bivariate data, okay? Uh, as opposed to if you saw like a chart or something like that, and you've got different heights of people, there's only a single variable. But this is two, and each axis represents a different one. So as I point out, there are two objects on there. There's the data in red. You also got this green thing. What's that about? That's the line of best fit. Yeah, the line of best fit, or the regression line, or the trend line, or the all different names for the same object. By the way, when you've got an object and it's got lots and lots of different names, that's a signal to you that the object is important to lots of different kinds of people, and they each give it their sort of customary name. So. I'll call it the line of best fit for now because I think that's the most descriptive name. Every time you've got the data, you've got the line. You've got the data, you've got the line. Let's have a look at this top row. Okay. You can see as you go from left to right, the line of best fit doesn't change, but the data changes around it. All of these sets of data can have the same line of best fit. What <coughs> words would you use to verbally describe how the data changes as we move from left to right. What words would you use? Okay, I could say the data gets spread out from the line of best fit. Okay, everything used to be right, bang on over here, but here it just kind of starts to diffuse outwards. Okay, so I could say spread. Are there any other words you could use to describe it? Okay, so you could you could describe all of the data in terms of how closely it hangs to the line of best fit. Let me say that again. You can describe this data in terms of how closely it aligns with the line of best fit. Okay? Can you see on this data set and this one as well, every single data point is on the line of best fit. Bang on. Okay? Here, a few are on it, but most of them are above and below. And here I can count one, two, three, just a handful in the middle there, and most of them are sort of quite spread out. So this word that we uh, attach to this is a really important word. It's called correlation. Yes. So it's actually half the heading. I'm going to give you the um, second half in a minute. Correlation, like the word suggests, is when you've got things together that are linked. Right? So co is whenever you co-interior, cooperate, um, and relate means, well, okay, they're linked together in this line of best fit. Now, in order to describe this numerically, because you want to say more than, oh, these are very correlated, or they're not very correlated, we attach a number to correlation so we can describe it in quantitative concrete terms. So when we talk about correlation, the number that's attached to it is called the correlation coefficient. Now, with a name like correlation coefficient, a sensible letter to choose to talk about the correlation coefficient X. <laughs> is uh well it's not C it's R okay <laughs> don't, don't, don't know it's about as good as gradient being M which we've seen before as well okay but R you will see over and over again if you do any stats at uni this letter R comes up frequently this is what they're talking about right? is something closely correlated or is it poorly correlated okay so for example Let's go over here. See how everything is bang on the line. Okay? This would have a correlation coefficient of 1. Okay? That's as close as you can get. Okay? This means everything is pretty much on the line of best fit. As you get further and further away from the line of best fit, the correlation coefficient gets smaller and smaller. So for example, this <laughs> might be 0 0.6. This might be 0 0.3, 
okay? You still can see there's a trend. This is not random data, okay? If I were to say add a few extra points on here, let's uh, copy this. If I were to turn this graph into this, That'll do. Okay. As you've seen before, there's no pattern to this. Just because you have a greater x doesn't mean anything about your y value, right? See how all of these people have the same x value, but they all have different y values. So it's like there's no relationship between these two, okay? That will be a correlation coefficient of zero. No connection at all, no link. So r equals one, perfect correlation. Loose con correlation, looser correlation, but we can express these numerically so that we're not reliant on subjective language. Okay. Now, all these things here, I'm going to get rid of my extra dots now. All these things here, you can see the trend line, the line of best fit, that's better. The line of best fit is going upwards, right? As x gets bigger, y also gets bigger. So we call this a positive correlation. As one increases, so does the other. Okay? So everything's going up, and these positive numbers here tell you it's a positive correlation. So therefore, when you have a look at the bottom half of the page, yeah. Okay, this perfectly lines up, but as x increases, y decreases. So this is not a positive correlation like up here. This is a negative correlation. However, it's still bang on. So, wrong color. So... It still has this value of 1, but it's negative, indicating it's going down. Um, if you thought that it was between like 0.6 and 0.3, would you say like 0.4 or something like that? Or so, yeah, I'll show you how to get like the numbers on this. Yeah. You're never going to expect it to look at a graph and come up with a number. This is actually calculated in quite a specific way, which I will show you today. Um, but this tells you, oh, okay, this gives you an actual measure for how closely something is correlated. You might see data without the graph. It hasn't been graphed for you, but they'll tell you this. They'll tell you the number. And then you can say, oh, okay, they're all closely related. They all quite, they hang together really nicely. If you put a trend line through, your predictions will be highly accurate. Whereas over here, your predictions will be quite inaccurate, if that makes sense. There'll be a lot of error there. Okay, so coming back to here. It's a negative correlation. This is really tight, so it's still one, everything's right on. This is still going to be negative, but it's looser. So this might, for instance, be negative 0 0.6 and negative 0 0.3. I'm just pulling numbers out of the air. Okay. So, two things that we're looking for here in terms of the correlation coefficient. Number one, as one number gets bigger, does the other one also get bigger? Like, do they get bigger together? If they do, it's a positive correlation, so you get these positive numbers, okay? Uh, negative, the other way around. Secondly, not only am I thinking about the direction, I'm also thinking about how closely things bunch, okay? So if they're super, super close, you're going to get the correlation coefficient of 1. As it gets smaller, you get more spread out. Does that make sense? Yeah. 